Around the world today, more than ever, Christians are driven from their homes and in many cases killed. What would motivate a Christian to hold to his or her faith in the face of such intense persecution, when it would be so much easier to simply deny Christ and go on undisturbed? We get a glimpse of this as we look at Acts chapter 7 and see Stephen, the first martyr of the church, after being hauled before the Sanhedrin for a trial because he was doing wonders and signs among the people, Stephen charges his captors with resisting the Holy Spirit. The scriptures tell us that Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. The enraged religious leaders cast him out and had him stoned to death. But why didn't Stephen simply recant? Why not apologize and go free? Well, because Stephen had encountered the living Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. He had experienced forgiveness of his sins and received the gift of eternal life. He knew that suffering at the hands of zealots was only for a moment but that what Jesus Christ offered him was eternal. Jesus himself said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. The life of Christ demands a response from every man, woman, and child. How will you respond to Jesus, the Savior? The answer to that question will determine your eternal destiny. After a billion years of eternity have gone by, you will have only just begun. Will you spend that eternity in the joyful presence of God the Son? Or will you spend it enduring the endless wrath of God against your sins? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you have not done so already, turn from your sins today, right now, and put your faith in Jesus Christ for your eternal salvation. And may the grace and peace of God be yours in abundance.